Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents What if Earth had a ring like Saturn's? Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. We know that some planets can have rings. Saturn's rings are especially famous. But could Earth have had a ring around it too? We wanted to find out. We had two big questions to answer. How could a ring have formed around Earth? And what would happen if there was a ring around our planet? We came up with an idea, a hypothesis, that an asteroid was ripped apart as it passed by our planet millions of years ago. Then, all the dust and debris could have formed a ring around Earth. We hypothesized that meteorites rained down from this ring onto the Earth to form a chain of impact craters. We found lots of evidence to support our hypothesis. Also, there was a very big global cooling event shortly after these impacts. Scientists have not been able to prove why this happened. If the Earth did actually have a ring around it back then, it could explain this global cooling mystery from 446 millions of years ago. Introduction. Have you ever seen a shooting star? Well, shooting stars are actually pieces of rock from space called meteors. Meteors that make it through the Earth's atmosphere and fall to the ground are called meteorites. When they hit the Earth, they are traveling fast enough that they may leave a large hole. These holes caused by meteorite crashes are called impact craters. Millions of years ago, there was a time where there were lots more meteorites falling to Earth than usual. We call this time the Ordovician period, pronounced Ordovician. Geologists found something interesting when they investigated limestone rocks from the Ordovician period. Limestone rocks are generally well preserved throughout geological history. This means some limestone rocks have been around for hundreds of millions of years. Scientists have examined limestone rocks in several places around the world and found lots of stony meteorites of a type known as L. chondrite. But why are there so many of these meteorites in these old rocks? We think a giant L. chondrite asteroid was ripped apart by tidal forces as it passed too close to Earth. The resulting pieces formed a debris ring around the Earth. We wanted to explore the impact craters from millions of years ago. This would help us to understand if there actually could have been a ring around the world. In this photo, you can see that a meteor shower is when many pieces of rock from space come into the Earth's atmosphere around the same time. We call these streaks of light shooting stars. The photo is black and there are streaks converging toward the middle. Methods. We studied impact craters from the Ordovician period to look for evidence of whether Earth used to have a ring. We looked at these impact craters in a few different ways. First, we modeled the world's geography and the distribution of tectonic plates during the Ordovician period. We did this with computer programs and by looking at data from the past. Tectonic plates move slowly over time, so millions of years ago the Earth looked very different. Next, we needed to be sure that we picked the best preserved impact craters from the correct time. This would help us get the most accurate results. We chose places that have not changed much over millions of years. Some examples are places with less erosion and fewer mountains. Finally, we wanted to analyze the distribution of these craters in more detail. We looked at the impact craters spread around the world to see if they followed a pattern. If they were just spread randomly around the world, then a ring around the Earth wouldn't be likely. We used special calculations to work out this pattern. We also compared these ancient impact craters to more recent ones. Results. We found that the impact craters from the Ordovician period did follow a pattern. They were not randomly distributed around the world. We found that these craters were often found in clusters. These craters were often found in areas that were around the middle of the Earth, near the equator. Here in figure one, you can see a map of the impact craters formed during the Ordovician period. Scientific models suggest that these were the tectonic plates position at that time. On the map, the equator is at zero degrees latitude and is marked with a dashed line. The positions of the impact craters are marked with red dots. 
Looking at the map, how would you describe the pattern of craters around the world? Discussion. The pattern of impact craters near the equator does suggest that Earth might have had a ring. We think the answer is that an asteroid broke apart as it came very close to our planet. Earth's gravity would have captured the debris after the asteroid broke up, and then this debris would have migrated to form a ring around the Earth's equator. The rings around Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are all positioned around their respective equators. Over time, Earth's ring would have decayed. That means the pieces of the asteroid would have fallen to Earth as meteors and meteorites. This explains why there is so much L-chondrite meteorite material in the limestone rocks. It also explains why the impact craters are near the equator. If such a ring existed, the fact that Earth is tilted relative to the Sun may have caused the global climate to change too. A ring would have blocked the sunlight and created a shadow on the Earth. Getting less light would mean the cold places would have gotten even colder. This idea might explain a global cooling event that happened shortly after the impact craters formed during the Ordovician period. Conclusion Studying rocks can help us understand how our planet looked millions of years ago. Have you ever examined an interesting rock and thought about where it came from? We should all keep asking these questions and be as creative as possible with our ideas. Our experiment shows that you can investigate anything, even if it happened long before we existed. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters, published on November 15, 2024. Research conducted by Andrew Tompkins, Aaron Martin, and Peter Kaywood all from the School of Earth, Atmosphere, and Environment at Monash University in Australia. See more information in the accompanying PDF. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.